here's the deal. We're a couple minutes out. We're driving to the property. Uh, the crew called, and as I understand it, right now the tenants are actually uh, grabbing all of their belongings and, and putting them out, trying to pack them up because the bailiffs are scheduled to come at 1130. Currently right now it's 1113 in the morning. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be watching this and I'm expecting some type of hate from those liberal f***s out there like, what the hell, Holton Wise, you guys are horrible, how could you throw a family out, it's snowing, uh, blah, blah, blah. Clayton, you're, you're literally in Portugal, though. Like, you, you see how that looks. You're, you're actually in Portugal. So, I mean, I, I, I think <laughs> claiming it's bullshit when you're, you've literally left America... I, that doesn't really make sense, does it? I don't know how this is any of your business, to be honest with you. I really don't know how you've made my business your business. I see you I see you in bigger pockets blowing Todd Burton, hanging out in bigger pockets and Jay Hendricks. Like, you're hanging out with these guys, back, patting each other on the back, back and forth. I just believed it. I mean, this is his own, his own marketing. I mean, it's just everything that he would talk about uh, was almost directionally opposite of what reality is in the field. You can't have hundreds of people that have lost, you know, significant sums and some that have um, lost entire life savings or retirement accounts. I mean, they're, and a lot of it is, is they paid for rehab that never got done. I mean, that's just out now fraud. Welcome to the show, folks. I will be your host. I am James Wise. This, this is my show, the show where I talk about the real estate topics that I think you need to hear and I answer your questions, right? And today, man, I want to talk about the website Bigger Pockets and their politics problem, right? I think there is a politics problem. At bigger pockets, right? Now, what, what what do I mean? What's going on here, right? Well, before we even get into that, let's talk. What is bigger pockets? I'm sure there's a lot of you out there watching this show right now that know what bigger pockets is, right? But for those of you who don't, uh, bigger pockets is pretty cool, right? Uh, bigger pockets is a pretty cool website. I've been uh, on that website for almost like. 10 years now, I think, right? What it is, it's a social network, uh, real estate forum, media conglomerate, uh, real estate, all things real estate, educational content type type deal, right? Uh, I guess I would describe it as like Facebook, but for real estate investors. And it's like the biggest uh, biggest company of that type, right? There's like other companies like that out there, but I think Bigger Pockets is by far the biggest and in my opinion, probably the best. I think it's a pretty cool website. Now this isn't like a, a video that's sponsored by Bigger Pockets. Uh, they haven't like put me up to making this video or anything like that. I'm not doing any of this in conjunction with them. Uh, this is just pure, purely based on my opinion, my observations, right? So uh, if you came here thinking I'm like gonna shell for Bigger Pockets, not the case. If you came here thinking I'm about to like trash Bigger Pockets, also not the case, right? Uh, but that's what Bigger Pockets is. Very, very, very large, uh, like real estate educational platform. It's pretty cool. Uh, I've met a lot of clients off of there, met a lot of people I've worked with in the past. Uh, I spent a lot of time utilizing that uh, website. So if you're interested in, in real estate investing, you should probably check it out, right? Uh, as a matter of fact, I've spent so much time on that website that I'm actually uh, the second most frequent poster that website has ever had, right? See me up there, James Wise, 24,093 posts, right? I'm even higher uh, than the guy who founded it, Josh Dorkin. Now, to my understanding, uh, he sold he sold his, his business. It's now owned by uh, some other investment firm, right? But that's how long I've been posting on that website, right? I've been posting on that website so long that I was actually – uh, on the podcast back when the founder, Josh Dorkin, and uh, his his uh, podcast host partner, Brandon Turner, also no longer with the company, were actually doing the podcast, right? I was on episode, I think it was like 227. It was back in like 2015 or 16, something like that, right? So I've been on that site doing a lot of cool stuff, talking about real estate for a very, very long time. That's how I ended up as number two 
on the list of most prolific posters. Heck, I was even uh, a moderator on that site uh, for like a couple years, right? No longer a moderator, uh, but still made that multiple posts, right? The only guy who posted more than me uh, was a guy by the name of Jay Henricks, who I've also met and done some pretty cool work with uh, on the website, right? That second clip that I played for you at the beginning of this show, right? Clayton, you're, really you're literally in Portugal, though. Like, you, you see how that looks. You're, you're actually in Portugal. So, I mean, I, I, I think <laughs> claiming it's bullshit when you're, you've literally left America... I, that doesn't really make sense, does it? I don't know how this is any of your business, to be honest with you. I really don't know how you've made my business your business. I see you I see you in bigger pockets blowing Todd Burton, hanging out in bigger pockets and Jay Hendricks. Like, you're hanging out with these guys, back, patting each other on the back, back and forth. I just believed it. I mean, this is his own, his own marketing. I mean, it's just everything that he would talk about uh, was almost directionally opposite of what reality is in the field. You can't have hundreds of people that have lost, you know, significant sums and some that have um, lost entire life savings or retirement accounts. I mean, they're, and a lot of it is, is they paid for rehab that never got done. I mean, that's just out now fraud. That was part of the three hour documentary me and my team put together on the train wreck that is uh, Clayton Morris and all the scam and fraud allegations that came out of uh, his business and dealings with uh, Ocean Point uh, down there in Indianapolis and other areas, right? And a lot of the work that myself, my team, and Jay Henricks chipped in and helped out a little bit, a lot of that information and the people I met for those interviews and, and, and a lot of the first-person stuff uh, a lot of the horror stories about uh, what the alleged victims and things of that nature uh, were dealing with because of Clayton's business dealings. Uh, a lot of that was possible uh, because of the information that is widely shared on Bigger Pockets, right? So uh, if you're into biz, it's a cool place to go for all things real estate. All things real estate except for one little sneaky thing you ain't ever going to find. You are never gonna find political discussion on bigger pockets and i think that is a problem i think bigger pockets has a politics problem right they specifically uh prohibit uh political stuff right right from their rules okay political threads not permitted on bigger pockets any post or thread regarding politics will be removed Bigger Pockets reserves the right to edit any post or thread that may contain political commentary. Bigger Pockets is a real estate forum, not a forum for religious or political debates, discussion, or proselytizing. Proselytizing? Pros, pros, I don't know. That's a, that's a tough one for your boy Jay Wise, right? But what you won't find is political discussion on Bigger Pockets, right? Bigger Pockets says, hey, man. Uh, we're a real estate forum. We're not talking about politics, right? And earlier I said uh, that I believe it's kind of like Facebook, but for real estate investors. And I know everybody watching this show right now knows what Facebook is, right? If you don't, I don't even know how you know what YouTube is. Like, that would be insane, right? So you go on Facebook and you start to see people ranting and raving. And Facebook's kind of like an echo chamber of sadness, right? You take people that make posts that are angry, that get other people angry. And those are the posts that Facebook juices. And, and you see them all over your feed. I think there's even been uh, data and stories out there and internal like research done by Facebook itself that they've like confirmed this, right? That like negative uh, posts get more attention, create more engagement, uh, and their algorithm, you know, it digs that, right? Because, like, they're in the business of engagement, right? The longer you spend on the platform, the more time your eyeballs are geared towards Facebook, uh, the more advertising dollars they could sell, right? That's the same for everything, right? Uh, Bigger Pockets, in my opinion, is probably like the one outlier uh, that does not allow that type of stuff, right? They, they go against it. And I personally disagree with this, but hey, I haven't created a really big, uh, like, real estate social media platform with, like, millions of viewers, so, uh, or millions of members, rather, right? So, like, uh, you know, what do I know? I guess it's just my opinion. Obviously, 
if I knew how to run a better uh, real estate social media platform than Bigger Pockets, I'd probably have one. Uh, but I think they're missing out here. Now I see, I see why they do what they do. I see why they don't want that type of stuff on their website. They want to focus on real estate. They don't want people fighting, and they don't want to create that conflict like some of the other platforms you see, right? Like everybody fighting on Twitter. Right? That's all Twitter is, right? Stuff like that, right? They don't want to do that, right? But I believe. The bigger pockets is missing out. They're missing the ball on politics, right? Because it's not. It's not unrelated to real estate. It is so related to real estate, right? Now, that very, very first clip that I played for you, right? Let's play it again. Here is the deal. We're a couple minutes out. We're driving to the property. Uh, the crew called, and as I understand it, right now the tenants are actually grabbing all of their belongings and, and putting them out, trying to pack them up because the bailiffs are scheduled to come at 11.30. Currently right now it's 11.13 in the morning. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna be watching this and I'm expecting some type of hate from those liberal f**ks out there like, what the hell, Holden Wise, you guys are horrible. How could you throw a family out? It's snowing, uh, blah, blah, blah. In that clip, Right, I made that dig at the liberals, right? And uh, this video was actually the most popular video Holton Wise has ever really put out, right? Uh, looking at it, I pulled the screenshot today. 1,332,099 views. Published this video four years ago, and it's got 1.3 milli views, right? And there's thousands of comments, thousands, right? And if you go through those comments on that particular video, and if you read through them, there's probably hundreds, hundreds of comments where people are like, essentially, why would you bring politics in this, James? I was watching the video till you started talking politics and then I was turned off. Politics doesn't have anything to do with real estate. Politics, why'd you bring politics? Blah, 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 right? Hundreds of comments of people saying that politics in real estate have nothing to do with one another, right? And that appears to be the stance uh, that, like, Bigger Pockets has taken. Politics and real estate don't have anything to do with one another, okay? That's what they're saying. I disagree! I disagree more than anybody. I cannot imagine how any person who's been in the real estate business can like, look in the mirror and honestly say to themselves that they believe politics and real estate are not related. Politics is the most important part of the real estate investment business. Folks, Holton Wise, if politics didn't exist, Holton Wise probably wouldn't exist, right? What Holton Wise does is help real estate investors who live in overly left-leaning locations, overly government regulated locations where it makes no sense to be a rental property owner we help them invest in the markets where it makes sense right without politics without differing politics and differing regions and differing states and differing policies my business wouldn't even exist right because politics plays a major major role in your investments and if you don't think so you do not know what's going on you don't know what you don't know right take a look at this one Put out this video, Ask James Wise 69. What can you do about your city shutting down your Airbnb business? You know what prompted this video? And you know what we covered in that video? We covered a story about uh, Hawaii, right? Very popular city and area in Hawaii, changing the law to no longer allow people to run Airbnbs, right? They changed the minimum tenancy to 90 days. Seems an awful lot to me, like if you're an Airbnb host in Hawaii and you've paid millions of dollars for an oceanfront property because you're running a very successful Airbnb and everything's great on Monday and then on Tuesday, the local government's like, yeah, your business is illegal, you got to shut it down. Well, that seems like real estate and politics have quite a bit to do with one another, right? Why don't y'all go talk? to the people who've spent millions of dollars 
investing in a business that was legal on Monday and then come Tuesday was completely illegal. You don't think real estate and politics are related? What about this one, huh? Canada's racist housing policy. Foreigners banned from buying Canadian housing. Eh, that was episode 65 of this show. Politics and real estate don't have to do with each other. Say I'm a homeowner and I want to sell my house and some dude from America, right? Maybe he's a dude who lives in Hawaii and he wants to buy it because he had an Airbnb. It's now illegal. And he's like, hey, man, I like your house in Canada. I'm going to buy it. Well, the government says he's not allowed. So now I can't sell my house to this guy. You telling me real estate and politics don't have to do with one another? Come on. What about this one? Uh, Dallas considers restricting home sales for real estate investors. Texas, one of the great red states, a place that is widely known as a conservative safe hold, right? Well, guess what? California, and we'll get into California, the Communist Republic of California, which, by the way, you guys dig this shirt, promo code HWTV10. Get yourself 10% off on it, right? Click the notes below. You know you like this shirt, folks. California. We're going to get into California. Probably the worst offender of them all. You have an exodus of people fleeing California because it's too left-leaning, and it's starting to make no sense to own property in the state of California. Where are they going? They're going to Texas, and Texas is starting to get this big swell and swath of blue. And a lot of people think in the next 10 to 20 years, Texas may in fact turn blue. And because of that shift, you're starting to see things like the state of Texas considering legislation that outlaws who can and cannot buy property, right? You telling me real estate? And politics don't have to do with one another? Seattle lost 10,000 rental properties over the course of like a year or two. Seattle's one of those locations where the government uh, has put landlord-tenant laws uh, in place that are, are not in the middle. They're like extremely tenant-friendly, tenant right? And they make it almost impossible uh, to be a landlord in Seattle, right? You pretty much are guaranteed to lose money, it seems, with the way those policies are. You have very little rights out there. And that has manipulated the market so much that 10,000 homes, 10,000 rental units were pulled off the market uh, because property owners in Seattle didn't want to deal with it anymore. Said it before, I'll say it again, folks. Are you telling me real estate and politics don't have to do with one another? What about this one? California, the worst offender of them all, right? Episode 58 of this show. New California law aims to stop you from flipping houses, right? California doesn't want people flipping houses. If you try to buy a house and then resell it in a short period of time, California is going to hit you with a new additional tax penalty fee, right? Politics and real estate, yeah, they have a lot to do with each other. Staying in California, right? Because California... They don't want you flipping houses, right? But guess what? If you decide to leave your houses vacant, right? If you have a house and you don't want to sell it too quickly because you don't want to pay that penalty and you just leave it vacant, they're going to fine you and fee you for that out there in California, right? But guess what? If you have tenants in your houses in California, you still can't evict them, folks. It's 2022. COVID restrictions, those are a thing of the past in the majority of the world, except for California. It is still illegal to evict people in California because of COVID-19 restrictions here in 2022, right? So recapping the worst of the offenders, California, if you have a tenant and they don't pay rent, you're not allowed to evict them. Okay. If you decide to just leave your property vacant, they're going to fine you. Oh, can't put a tenant in there because if you don't pay rent, I got to let them keep my house for free. All right, I'm going to just leave my house empty. Oh, wait, nope. California's going to fine me for that. Okay, no problem. I'm just going to sell my house. Oh, wait, California's going to fine me for that too, folks. You don't think Real estate 
and politics have something to do with one another? On top of all that, California, the worst offender of them all, is considering doubling taxes. Okay? Doubling taxes, folks. These are real issues. If you're going to invest in real estate, you have got to pay attention to the political atmosphere in the market you're considering investing in, folks. There is going to be a huge swing to your bottom line if there is a fine associated with selling your house, with keeping your house empty, if you're not allowed to evict your tenant, if the local government is going to double your taxes next year, right? These are all things that you guys need to factor in when you're considering investing in real estate, right? So to all those people uh, who thought it was crazy for me to bring politics into that eviction video from the beginning of the show, what are you talking about, dude? I didn't bring politics into the conversation. The conversation is intertwined with politics, folks. Politics and real estate go hand in hand. Politics and business go hand in hand. Why do you think most politicians are intertwined with businesses in the country, in the world, folks? These things are all interrelated. And you got your head in the sand if you are going to refuse uh, to acknowledge that because... What the local government does is going to greatly impact what you are able to do with your business, and you always have to be paying attention to this stuff. You always have to be cognizant of this stuff. You always have to be a couple steps ahead, seeing what's going on, seeing where the landscaping is going to change so you can make the necessary adjustments to your business plan, to your strategy, because I can tell you, without a doubt, politicians are going to have a big play in your business, whether you like it or not. And back to uh, the original topic of the show, right? That website, Bigger Pockets, great website. Think they do a lot of things amazing, but you really, you really don't get the opportunity uh, to talk politics on their website. And hey, it's it's their website; they can totally do that. But I think uh, they're missing a large amount of good conversations that we could all be having. And that's what I like to do here on Holton Wise TV. That's what I like to do on the Ass Waves. <laughs> Can't even talk. That's what I like to do here on Holton Wise TV. That's what I like to do here on the Ask James Wise Show, right? I like to have those political discussions, folks, because I know, acknowledge, and accept how intertwined politics and real estate are. So... In the comments below, let me know your thoughts on politics. Let me know your thoughts on bigger pockets, allowing and or not allowing political discussions on their website. And if you want to continue having politically based discussions on how they affect your real estate business, I uh, implore you to subscribe here on Holden Wise TV. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.